with the, the work that we've been doing at K-State, we've been trying to find lower dose uh, compounds that will have similar tannin binding properties that will not allow animals to learn to avoid the plant. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, because if they don't experience the ne negative effects of tannin, um, they don't mind eating. We're here in Matfield Green today to talk about uh, one of our chief concerns, a plant called Ceresia lespidiza. It was uh, introduced in the Flint Hills accidentally back in the 1980s, and it has uh, particularly aggressive invasive characteristics. There are portions of the Flint Hills, uh, well over 600,000 acres that are infested by this plant, it causes a number of serious problems, uh, including a, a serious loss in land value and in grazing value for livestock. The problem with the plant, the reason that livestock avoid it, won't consume it to any degree, is that it's high in a compound called tannin. Uh, tannin is a compound that will bind protein in the plant itself and also in the gut of an animal that ingests it and renders that protein unavailable in the diet. Uh, a simple way to think about it is a cow or a steer that samples Ceresia lespidiza would suddenly find itself with a gut that was devoid of available protein. The animal gets a bellyache, for lack of a better term, and, and learns very quickly to avoid the plant. Uh, the plant has incredible reproductive characteristics. One single plant uh, can produce 1,000 seeds per year and upwards of 1,000 seeds on a single branch. Um, without any significant grazing pressure on this plant, it re reproduces unabated. And it's the reason that we have close to a million acres in the state of Kansas that are, that are affected, that are degraded by this invasive weed. Individually, as a rancher or, or a producer, uh, we don't have the uh, expertise to uh, conduct our own research. And uh, Casey is uh, uh, knowledgeable in how to do that. And uh, it's vital to the, to the industry that we learn how to control this plant and what we're doing today is, is just trying to see how we can extend the research of this, of this invasive species we're working with, Ceresia lespidiza, out on the native prairie. And why it's so aggressive in the Flint Hills and in the native pastures, I don't know, but there's got to be something there. And that's why it's so important to have K-State involved in doing this research so that when we find out, and we will find out the answer, then we can export that information out. I'm Brian Obermeyer, I'm with the uh, Nature Conservancy. I head up uh, the Nature Conservancy's Flint Hills Initiative. Uh, so uh, one of the things that I work a lot with uh, is doing private lands conservation and one of the most pressing issues with private lands conservation are invasive species. And uh, today we're working on the uh, Ceresia lespidiza issue. It's a highly invasive plant to the native tall grass prairie, uh, uh, to the Flint Hills. K-State Extension has really been uh, you know, one of our most important partners in trying to deal with invasive species, namely Ceresia lespidiza. Uh, the, the research that Casey is doing, we have high hopes that it, it will be, uh, uh, will, will yield, you know, some tools, uh, a, a, a way of, of lessening Ceresia's competitive advantage. One of the ideas that we've had here in recent years is if, if, we could, if we could treat the plant or if we could treat the animal that might graze the plant in a way that would eliminate the negative effect of the, the tannin toxin. Okay, we might be able to put significant grazing pressure on this plant using a domestic herbivore that has economic relevance in the Flint Hills. We might be able to put enough grazing pressure on that plant to dampen its reproductive characteristics and, and, and at least we could learn to live with it. We could allow it to naturalize to this environment and, and cause it to lose some of its uh, aggressive invasive characteristics. Um, you know, the, the gentleman that I'm sharing this, this meeting with here today at uh, these are all working ranchers. They're passionate about the Flint Hills and they're passionate about their lifestyle. Uh, we, are a, we are a select group of people who are, who are influenced by this problem and who uh, are willing to step out and, and burn a little bit of personal energy to try and bring a solution.